Again, YouTube, this is Dr. Kendo, and I'm here with another Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor Commentary. This is where I create your favorite characters here in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor. We're going to start off with a cryptozoologist, and I specifically went with the male. Um, it's probably not super important, but uh, if you want to do it by my design, go ahead and uh, wait for the male, basically, cryptozoologist to show up as you type that in. As our source character for uh, the, the objects we're going to be creating today basically is Bendy. Uh, uh, highly requested from Bindi in the ink machine. And so here you can notice, of course, I've taken off the head, I've taken off the arms and the legs and all of that good stuff. You're pretty much forced to leave the torso on, so we'll do that, but we are going to cover it up with an egg. So you just type in EGG and get that egg right there. Next, we can go with a glue, and the glue can be kind of the middle of this bow tie that Bindi is wearing, and it's so funny because, you know, you want to make the parallels with a lot of big horror games that especially were big on YouTube and stuff, and uh, a lot of these characters Characters seem to have bow ties, a la Five Nights at Freddy's. A pike. There's a top fin of the pike kind of on the tail end of it, I guess. And uh, that's going to be the other ends of kind of that necktie, bow tie thing that Bendy's got right there. And then we went with an octopus. There's a tentacle piece that is like a V if you stretched it out really wide. It's almost like a 130 degree angle. Uh, that tentacle piece is what we've used actually for both sides, Bendy's arms here. And uh, for the legs, we're going to go with a chalk. You get several options whenever you type in chalk in this game, so go ahead and pick the writing chalk. And I'm going to go with a marshmallow. The marshmallow can be for the start of the shoes down here for Bendy, and uh, to finish those off, we'll go with the hemisphere. In Scribble Knots Unmasked, if you are playing in that game, you are going to need to type in hemisphere just all the way out, but uh, in Scribble Knots Unlimited, you can click on this kind of library of geometric shapes and get it from there. I call it the geometry library for that reason. And we've got a golf ball for the start of the glove on Bendy's front arm here. It would be to kind of our front facing, I guess, that arm. And we're going to use a peach for the other one. And we went with a pool girl and took the back arm of the pool girl. And for that, that can be basically the top of the gloves, you know, where they kind of meet the wrist and whatnot right there. And so the golf ball for this other side, you're going to see why we chose that as opposed to the peach, you know, that there's two different stamps basically for, uh, in essence, the same look. Well, this game, Scribble Knots Unlimited, does have a limited amount of stamp space even though it is called Scribble Knots Unlimited. Um, you basically, you know, each one of these things is a stamp and you can see that we've just hit the limit. There's a little error right here. We were using these 29 page library arm shapes on the third page. I'll get into that in a second. But we also put dots and painted those black uh, for the gloves right there on Bendy on the hands. But we use that 29 page library arm shape on the third page. We use those for all the different pieces of fingers basically for Bendy. And you can't really see the fingers as much on the back hand. Hand, the one that's in the back side, you know, it would be to our right, but it's Bendy's left arm. So you can't see those as much. So to save some stamp space, we just went with the peach because it has a little pit part coming out of it that looks like the thumb. So one stamp to convey several things. But anyway, you can see on screen, we've got the properties editor here. It's where you edit health and scripting and stuff like that. Uh, so I like to read background information and fun facts whenever we're at this part of this series. And so let's do that for Bendy. Of course, it's from uh, Bendy and the Ink Machine. And this is straight Straight off of the game's description, you can probably find this on several websites, but Bendy and the Ink Machine is a first-person puzzle action horror game that begins in the far days past of animation and ends in a very dark future. Take on the role of Henry, an animator from long ago, returning to a forgotten place he never thought he would see again. What follows? Dot 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 is a mystery. And I thought it would be kind of a nice little nod to the game if we made Bendy shoot out ink as a projectile, you know, in this, so like as a projectile weapon here. So if we do get Bendy into some battles, which we will in the future of this video, you'll see Bendy shoot out a little ink blot. And so we're going to go ahead with a, uh, we're going to start off with a head as the source object. Of course, we're now going to create Bendy's head. I did mention there's a stamp limit and all that. That's why we are actually creating the head and the body separately. And you see me do that in a lot of the later episodes episodes of my series. Probably the last 100 episodes, you know, been doing this for a lot of them. It's so that we can get a lot of these details. You notice that, you know, we, we still had details we could have even probably added to the body that we didn't get to do because of that stamp limit. So now with the head, we put down a volleyball after painting the entire base, that source head black. And I'm going with a great white shark, uh, the top fin. What you want to be sure with that volleyball, though, that we put down first is you want to have basically push that uh, paintbrush icon. It's in the bottom 
bottom middle of the screen, very bottom. And there's a little palette where you can customize what color you want to do. Go all the way in the top left corner when you're customizing your color, basically, and it'll be the whitest white it can get. And that's what you need to cover up all the details that were on that volleyball. We now went with a seahorse, the basically tail piece, but it's not the end tail. It's just kind of that middle upper tail kind of part of it. And uh, we've got a tusk right now. Tusk, you want to do the bone tusk if that wasn't obvious. And the tusk is going to be for the little point on the end of that tusk. We literally don't need really other parts of that. We just want that point and maybe a little bit of the curve from that point coming down. Basically put that behind the volleyball as well as this moon that I just typed in here because we have a tusk on both sides now in the moon. And those tusks are going to be for some points here for like these bendy horns. It's like almost devil horns, you know, right there. There's going to be a lot of adjusting going on right here. This is uh, going to be a little bit complex just because the main thing that makes this difficult, I guess, is that you're not going to be able to see really what you're working with when your stamps are either this bleach white or pitch black. And that is what you need for the uh, other stamps. All those other stamps are just going to be straight up black and the darkest black you can get. So we're going to go with a whale fish next. When you're grabbing this top fin of the whale fish that I'm going to use, you can see a little star right there where I was poking at it. You try to get kind of to that point because sometimes it doesn't let you grab the whale fish fin. I think PC users have a little bit easier time than us Wii U users, but that's okay. The whale fish fin is basically we're going to have it up here at the top on the forehead. It's going to be this little dip, you know, uh, in essence, the white part of Bendy's head right there is not all the way around as a circle. It's got a little cut in it like this and the design. And so that's good right there. And we can go with a hemisphere next. We'll go with two hemispheres, I should say, one on each side of the head. And then I'm going to type in a black, I didn't mean double A, there we go, a black mamba. This is a snake and we're going to grab the tail end of that. So the very last tail part. And uh, that can be for the bottom eye parts right here. And I like the black mamba um, as the stamp for this because it has a little kind of waviness and curve in the bottom of it right here, which is going to be good when we take this beauty. I typed in beauty and of course it's the female beauty that we want and took the back arm of that. That's not only going to be for the mouth, but that's the equivalent of right here on the 29 page library. This arm in the bottom middle of the page right here, it comes from the female beauty. They are a little bit different when you grab them from the 29 page library, which is only in Scribble Knots Unlimited, so that's not in Unmasked. But a beauty can kind of get you that same look. And so I wanted to illustrate both points, I guess, both arms right there. So the one that we're actually working with uh, for the mouth was actually typing in beauty and grabbing the back arm, whereas the little lines underneath the eyes, like the cheeks coming up so smiley with the eyes here. Those were beauty arms from the 29 page library. I hope this all makes sense. We got jellyfish upper tentacle pieces to make the teeth. It's basically just a black line. Look near the jellyfish's body and you can see that there's just these little lines and you can grab those. And so if you're ever doing a head and a body separately in this game, you want to go into the properties editor again on your head object and the head item needs to, under the equipment tab, fill in this second to the last circle. It says can be worn on the face like glasses. You want to be sure that that circle is filled in right there. This will mostly have the head object that you created go, I would say again, it's mostly in the spot that you want it, but you're going to need to adjust a little bit. This is actually probably one of the closest I've ever done without any editing of this. So what I mean is now we're going to go ahead and edit the body object and we're going to turn on these green grids. You can press that basically on the panel of buttons to your left. You can press the top right button. It has a dotted line around it and stuff and some Maxwell's head among some other things. So when you click that, you can see these green grids show up and one of them is where the head is supposed to go. Obviously, we don't have a head on our body object because I described the stamp space earlier. Well, this time I'm just basically, uh, the only thing that I really needed to adjust here was move it up a little bit because the head needed to be just slightly higher. But again, I had it mostly in the right spot, so you may not even notice a huge change, but I noticed that it is a little bit higher up, which I wanted. If you want to do something just kind of fun and goofy and fit the bendy sepia tone style, you can do this. You know, you can make a separate bendy like I've done. I just copied my bendy character and colored it with the sepia tones as well as my kendo avatar. And then I just made a straight up rectangle that was huge and gargantuan in the background so that we would just have a sepia tone background. So look at that. You know, there's the uh, sepia head for Bendy. Now that would make the volleyball detail show up. So I did use a snowball for that instead. So it wasn't exactly like a copy paste edit or whatever. It, it, it did result from a copying of our original Bendy, but I made a few edits after that. And so here you can actually see we did create Muffet in a past episode. That was episode 198. And so I just used our overworld 
battle sprite Muffet right now because it kind of fits this color palette of a black and white bendy right here. Uh, they are going at it in a battle right now. Um, this is one thing to illustrate just to talk about another limitation in Scribblenauts Unlimited. If you do take off the original legs of your source object, which is almost inevitable for a lot of characters, or shrink down those original legs, you know, it's like basically if you don't keep on those original legs, your character does have a huge risk of sinking into the ground pretty far, and so our Muffet, you know, is a good example of that. Our Bendy actually it was made pretty well. It fit within, even though we did take off the cryptozoologist's legs, the original feet and legs, it's mostly kind of staying on the ground, you know, where we want it to be. Mostly. Just a little bit of sinking. And so the Muffet was an example of a danger that can happen because Muffet was shooting out the projectile of those spiders and they weren't actually able to hit anything because they were hitting the ground. She was too sunk into the ground too much to be effective. We did create the uh, overworld sprite, you know, the color version of Muffet, of course, in that episode too. Uh, but now we've got our Hello Neighbor, you know, the neighbor from Hello Neighbor. He's going to go ahead and take Bendy on. We actually probably, you know, if we would have made these creations at around the same time, I probably would have made the neighbor a little bit taller, bigger and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but right now he looks like a tiny neighbor <laughs> against our Bendy. Although, who knows? But uh, again, these are just made at such a far distance from each other in time. So that was definitely not something in mind. But anyway, we've got our neighbor and Bendy finishing off the battle. Let's see what happens. It looks like the neighbor is just down to like this last heart. I don't think there's any victory in store for the neighbor. Yep, the neighbor goes down. Bendy is victorious. And that looks really scary having the neighbor's head like that. He's just looking at Bendy like, I'm gonna get you. So that's crazy. I do like this character. I don't know much about Bendy and the Ink Machine yet. I obviously haven't gotten a chance to play it. Unless games are, like, sent to me for free, either through media press outlets or you guys somebody gifting it to me or something like that. I often don't play a lot of the games out there right now. You know, there's just too many that people request. I'm not made of money. Quite far from it, in fact. But anyway, now Bendy in the Ink Machine, I believe, is free. You can play Chapter 1 right now. So I certainly could try my hand at it. But the other thing that I am very deficient with is time. I do not have a lot of time either. So that's the second thing. If it's not the money, then it's the time in my life. At any given second of my day, there is about 18 things I could be working on, a ton of different people that I could be seeing, or a ton of work that just needs to be done. But all right, I hope you guys enjoyed some of the Nintendo Switch content that was going on uh, basically all this weekend. Up until now, some of those videos are on my channel. One last announcement, next week is PAX East. I'm gonna have to prepare something in advance because I'm just not gonna have enough time to wait for everybody's votes to get in and then to tally them and do whatever's most popular, most requested. That's what I usually do. This usually happens, you know, once or twice a year, I do need to bypass that system. And so you can still leave your comments and ask for what you want to see created in this series. But basically, we will delay that on to the next week after this one coming up. So basically, I'll be at PAX East from March 9th on through March 12th. And so I will need an episode for you guys then. I'm going to prepare it in advance again. So, okay, I hope you guys enjoyed Enjoy that, and I will catch you on the next vid. And thanks for viewing. So you can be the viewer and down the road of